Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's draw with me is going to be a little bit different. I am joined here with Sakura Opal, and if you are not familiar with Sakura Opal, then I will let her introduce herself first. Yay! Okay, hi everyone. I am Zeta, or if you guys know me as Saku or Sakura Opal, um, I also I also have a YouTube channel and I also do a lot of draw with me's and a lot of art related content and I also do some dance covers, art tutorials, and just music covers in general because I like celebrating all different types of arts. And yeah, I'm also a carrot, so today we'll just be drawing. Uh, we're 17. Hey. <laughs> okay, so. Um, this is actually gonna be part two of our collab, so please make sure to hop onto Veda's channel and make sure to watch the sketching portion and then come back and watch this one. <laughs> so basically, we have done sketches of Wanu and Woozy and we are gonna be swapping our sketch or our line art with each other and we're gonna be doing the coloring portion today. So, um, I guess we can get started. <laughs> And we'll be answering a few questions that you guys have sent us as well um, throughout the whole video. Um, first question is how to balance art for yourself, YouTube, and daily life? Um, for me, because I'm still in high school and um, there's a lot of pressure on like getting good grades and stuff. So it's really, it's really important to establish like a routine. So, and I also like I have a lot of extracurriculars like I like to dance and also I have to manage my channel so what I usually do is um, I use Google Calendar like really intensively to the point where when I hang out with my friends I send them a Google Calendar invite which is like so weird but like I'm like accepted or I'm not coming like I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, like so like that really helps you know what I have to do throughout the day and like what classes I have each day and I also use a planner like I can show it I have a planner I'm not gonna open it because then you guys I'm gonna expose my whole routine but in this planner basically it's like each day I'll oh, just flick to a page where um, it's not written yet so in each page there's like a um, space for you to put and I usually have a to-do list of what I have to do like homework or if I have classes that I would write on top oh I have dance class and then I also color code it if it's class then I color code it in yellow if it's like exams like color coded in orange and like stuff like that so I know what to do and just setting goals for yourself each day and make it like not too broad like if you just say oh I'm gonna finish a video like you might just go like oh that's so much work but if you split it up to like okay I'm gonna record write a script record and then edit and then and then make the thumbnail or something like that then you might get it done better yeah I feel like you're definitely more organized than I am. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure you have tips too, right? Because you you upload so much. I okay, it's gonna sound bad, but I work because of fear. <laughs> like I do things out of fear. <laughs> I can take it no more. <laughs> but I feel like it's what you said was very good. Is that um, splitting up? very like daunting tasks is very good mm -hmm. it's hard to find time for yourself to you know draw for yourself and just have free time so i feel like having a schedule is very good and it's probably healthier too to have some kind of structure but i don't like i don't know i, I don't technically follow anything besides that like i have to post the video on this day or like i should update Instagram because I've been inactive for a week. <laughs> but you're like so on top of your fat art and like this things you put, like you're so active. I'm like, I'm like in awe, like, like the spider envy, like, I keep bringing that example up, but like, only a few hours later, Rin just like, <laughs> posts her like amazing god tier masterpiece, and I'm like, the envy's just been out, bro. <laughs> I just, wait, okay, I guess that's like, you know how, like, people have, like, the Venn diagrams, so it's, like, I think it's, like, your hobbies, school, and sleep, usually? Mm -hmm. I guess, like, school, if we're, I guess, not in school anymore, it's, like, work. But, mm -hmm. for me, I always sacrifice sleep. <laughs> no! I got the mood, but you do what you have to do for 17. <laughs> 
So next question is, what's your favorite sport? So I feel like this is probably yeah. I think everyone knows. I like to dance. Wow. Okay. Um, if you haven't, you guys can check out my Seventeen Dance cover. You guys should. Like honestly, and you have you have one that you did a choreo of as well, right? Like yeah, I choreographed your booms. How do you even pronounce his name? I don't even know. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I actually don't Boom know. Boom Zoo, uh, I actually don't know. Okay, Seventeen's producer. Um, basically, he's really underrated, and I just wanted to. Yeah, but aside from dance, I used to be on the frisbee team. Um, at my school. Oh, it wow. was really cool. Um. I feel like frisbee. I really liked frisbee because before that I didn't do any like sports team sports. And I guess dancing is more like a solo sport. Like is it, you're like in a dance team, but you like you're, there's like no strategy of like throwing or like getting to a goal. You just perform a routine. But yeah, it was like just a good time. I wasn't the best at frisbee, but uh, like just I don't know. Being in a game with everyone is just very exciting. But then I had to quit because. You know, I have to balance two of them. There would be too much to balance on my plate, and you have to sacrifice sometimes. Did you do any sports? Um. So, like, currently, no. And I think in middle school and high school, I liked doing badminton, but I was not on like teams. I didn't like. I rarely try out for teams and stuff. It's just. I know it's so scary. Yeah, and then. I think it was in like middle school. I did discus. Ooh, discus. I'm like a potato. Like honestly, <laughs> I legit do not like. I'm not very active. I think I wasn't very active too. But then dance came, and I was like, "This is so fun." Wait, for your dance, like, are you? Do you mm-hmm. do like team choreos? Oh yeah. So, um, I'm well, like, kind of. Like, our dance deal, like, just got some of the students together and we want to enter a competition, so we do do some, and, like, we have showcases and stuff, and, like, those times where we are in teams, and, like, sometimes, like, they just throw us into, like, a basic, like, okay, make your own routine, or, like, and then we're like, what the heck? Because <laughs> like, they usually, like, they make us do our own stuff, and we're just like, huh. So, in my dance studios, I do some team stuff, but I... Also do like a lot of stuff because I don't have that many friends that are carrots that would like to do perform the whole. I don't have thirty carrot dancer friends who would want to cover home run with me. I guess <laughs> it's too many people. Hmm. Okay, so next question is: Do you have a favorite food? Okay, my favorite food is okay. Um, to my Chinese homies out there, it's custard mooncakes during mid-autumn festival it's so sad they only come once a year so like during the time of like it's actually oh no i'm I'm not yet but like during like august like like i'm like telling my grandma to stack up to like go to all these like bakeries and buy all the food cakes so i will have (laughs) yeah i really like the food cakes and try if you ever like if it's mid autumn festival season and like, you see one, you should try it out because it's so good. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I have a favorite to be honest. I feel like, hmm, like currently, I don't know what they're called. Um, is it Siulong Bao? You know this, like Siulong Bao. I don't know oh, how yeah. you say it, Siulong but Bao is, yeah, it's so good. Those are like I love eating them like when as soon as they're fresh and hot. It's just. Like, it's like a you comfort love food. food I, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Places you would like to travel to and why? Japan. Why? I think there's no explanation. It's because. Okay, well, firstly, I wanted to. Because I, last time I went, I went there to learn Japanese. And I want to go back there to practice because. When I came back to Hong Kong, I did continue my studies. Like, but I feel like when you're actually in the environment where everyone's speaking Japanese, you'll get like way better, and that's kind of how you learn a language too. Because so you guys know that English English isn't my first language; it's actually Cantonese. But my English it used to be really crap with it before, but then I went to an English-speaking environment, and that's why it's better. So I want to go back to Japan and finish, with, not finish, but like become better at Japanese. I mean, how can you not love Japan? So, (laughs) 
What about you? I think it's mine's actually the same. <laughs> oh. I miss Japan. Yeah, I'm so I'm waiting for the day that COVID's over. I agree. Because um, the last time I went to Japan was like, I think it's 2019. So it was me, my brother, and my two closest friends. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Have you watched Avatar? I have. My glass airbender. Water bending. Water bending. 100%. I wanted to be. When I was like 10, I was. Or 11, I forgot. But I was like, Katara is the coolest person in history. I want to be just like Katara when I grow up. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Mm. You know, like being able to speak any language. Oh my god, that would be so good. Yeah. I would want that, like including like sign language too, because I always wanted to learn sign language as well. Mm. Imagine being able to watch Going Seventeen without subtitles. <laughs> That's, That's true. The, dream. the perks. That's the yep. dream. <laughs> uh, watching anime, listening to J-pop. Knowing all the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Here's like a multi question, I guess. Um, what are your goals? So YouTube wise or in general? What are my goals? YouTube wise? I feel like there are many goals in my YouTube channel. So there's one for just like my community. It's just like being able to provide us like a comfortable space for people to share their art. Because when I first started I was I like just like I didn't really have like a community to post my art to except for it like I would show it to my friends but there was like no online community so I really wanted to make that for my for like my fan base or my community. But I guess my YouTube channel is also like a record for myself of how much I've grown. Like I like I don't know if you do this but I kinda of watch my old videos sometimes and I go like, Whoa Yeah. I've improved or like oh I like that was so long ago. I I can do so much better now. And like, like just like kind of like a diary for myself. Mm. Yeah. I kind of treat yeah. it the same way. Yeah. Well, how about like yeah. maybe not YouTube goals? Life goals. Like graduate <laughs> from high school. <laughs> yeah, I graduate from high school. Uh, hopefully get in a university because I mean our college I feel like some of my goals are too ambitious that was no. kind of embarrassing to say like I want to like produce my own song and then make an animated music video for my own song but that's like so ambitious so no uh, you can like, definitely like, do it though oh thank you maybe like in uh, in 17 years <laughs> Yeah, but th that would be cool. Or just like doing something really ambitious, like doing something, starting something cool, being an entrepreneur. And like, what if like I made a company and then like I I like like raised money to donate to charity or something like just something like really crazy. You know how Mr. Beast like does really crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, like something like that, but not that much. I don't know. I'm 16. Now. I've only, you know, when Vernon's die, it's like I'm only 17 and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always says that. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Mm, so I guess for YouTube goals, mine's similar. I also treat my YouTube more as like a place to record progress or like to look back on. Because mm -hmm. I always like the idea of being able to look back at your work and see how you used to or like approach things or like i don't know just the, the idea of showing the entire process from like start to finish is for me is like really interesting to watch like not only my own stuff but like other people's stuff so it's kind of like an archive so mm -hmm. i don't really have like specific youtube goals per se I, I just like the idea of building the community and then for goals in general probably i always wanted to make like a like a stationary brand Oh my god, I would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I'll buy it. I'll be your first customer. <laughs> I think like that's the almost like short term, long term goal kind of thing. Like I know it's possible if I put the right amount of work and effort into it. You can definitely do it. Oh, thanks. Uh, I, I am. I'll motivate you so you finish it so I can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're on to YouTube questions now. I guess that was kind of YouTube-ish as well. Uh -huh. But what made you start a YouTube channel? 
Okay, when, if you don't, because I spent, I guess I'm a generation, wait, okay, what generation am I? Z? Yeah. Am I Z? Okay. I actually okay. don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, let me Google the generation. Right okay. Um, okay, anyways, since I'm a generation Z, I spend most of my time on YouTube watching videos, and I always thought it was really, really cool to like just make a video. <laughs> I just thought that was really cool, and if people would watch it, it'd be like, wow, that's so cool. And I think when I was young, um, I, me and my friends would just bond over like a searching YouTuber. Like, we we would all bond over the Diamond Minecart. And then, okay, but then my channel had like a lot of different phases. Because I, because if you actually go to my about page, it says my, cha my channel was created in like, what, 2014? Or something. But like, but that's kind of just like when you like start YouTube, you need to make a channel. Weird. But like, but then, uh, 2014, yeah. Okay, so, but then, I think in the very beginning, this is very embarrassing, and I'm, I, I don't think I've told this to anyone, except for Rin, is that I used to make <laughs> Rainbow Loom tutorials. It, it was Rainbow Loom tutorials, and it was in Cantonese too, so, um, okay. And then I made like a My Little Pony tutorial, like how to draw a pony. And then in 2015, like, August or something, I got my first computer! Wow! And then, and then I just learned, I just like went on iMovie and played with like so many different editing things. And then my first video from there was like me making random buildings inspired by my little pony of Minecraft. <laughs> There's a reason why they're all deleted. Okay, okay, and then, and then I moved on to animatics. Right, like, yeah. I know, I moved on to My Little Pony Speed Tapes first. <laughs> and then I moved on to animatics. You know, a lot of musicals, like, people made a lot of animatics. Like, there was, like, a huge... It was really popular back in, like, 2017-ish. So, like, I kind of joined the hype train. And then... And then I kind of continued to make animatics until last year. I think I did that, for, like, in 2020. And then I kind of, my channel kind of grew because of that. And then, so then I was kind of got sick of making animatics because I feel like a lot of artists have this struggle. Is like when you make things for one certain fandom, they kind of expect you to only do that fandom. And when you do something for something else or maybe your own personal artwork, like it's not as well received. And then sometimes people keep requesting you for one specific thing and you're like, I don't want to draw it anymore, you know? So I got a concept of that, and then I just started doing my own stuff. And I was like, disregarding, I was like, you know what, I don't care what you think, I'm just gonna do what I like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, here we are now. <laughs> That's a very, I just explained my whole history of YouTube. <laughs> I think for me, mine was like, I feel like, a dumb reason? Well, not a dumb reason, but the outcome was kind of dumb. But. Um, my friends and I started doing digital art around the same time and I think because we work at different paces and I poured too much energy into just drawing in general when I was younger so I was trying to like learn a bunch of different like digital techniques and stuff and my friends wanted to learn I they asked if I could record myself doing it and me being dumb I posted it to YouTube thinking like only they could see it, which is not the case. <laughs> hey, but yeah, but it's good you did that. <laughs> or, else, or else we wouldn't have your channel now. I guess that's true, but I feel like it kind of was just a place where I used to post like the time lapse videos for like the most part, and then I think is it two thousand maybe two thousand nineteen, two thousand eighteen. I started actually posting like talking videos or like more like process-ish videos i think it's like 2019 i'm assuming i think one thing is like you post your whole like process that i think is really cool because i usually just speed it up and actually you post the whole thing so it's like you can see like every step you make but i feel I like yeah, yeah some people i don't know if it's like misleading but like some people think i take half an hour to draw the whole thing and i'm just like wait like, there's cuts, guys. <laughs> yeah. But usually, like, but like, it's like in real time most of the time. His mind's like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one more thing I want to add. It's just like, 
a lot of people ask us like how you get better at drawing digital but like one thing Rin suggested or like Jira suggested already is just to like watch people's process like that really really helps watch watch more of Rin's videos well you stuff. actually do tutorials so <laughs> hey, hey, hey I'm trying to, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to promote you here even though it's your channel <laughs> Well, you guys should also check out Veda's channel though. She does like the variety of different stuff, like including dancing and drawing, and you do tutorials, and like you do a variety of different stuff. Oh, yeah, I guess like just like when I do one thing only, I get so really tired of it. So I like even for like drawing, like I like have so many styles, like realism, traditional, digital, They're all anime. Nice. <laughs> oh, thanks. And you have a nice so, like, aesthetic too. Other YouTube question is equipment that you use to film your videos. Oh my god, I'm gonna look so lame compared to you actually using a mic and stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay guys, my equipment, my iPad right I'm recording, the thing I'm recording is my iPhone 11, okay? Uh, what I'm recording on is QuickTime Player with my Apple earphones. Here, my Apple, Apple earphones. <laughs> Very basic, very basic equipment, but it works. No, but that's, use nice that's editing good. Pictures. No, that's good though, because I feel like people think you need like all of the equipment to start making a YouTube video. But I really want a mic. Mic is a good idea, but really your sound's so. fine though. <laughs> yeah, we love Apple, not sponsored. <laughs> And then, I guess for me, I use the Logitech C920, I believe, which is like a webcam, and it's just on an arm, which is why I have this weird angle. So I always wanted like a bird's eye view angle, but I can't, because I just have a tripod, and if I do it on my table, you can see the legs of my tripod. <laughs> I film with the tripod, and that was always an issue. And then for the mic, I just have a, I don't know how you say this, a fee fine, fi fine mic. I'll make sure to put in the description <laughs> so you guys can check that out. But you don't need expensive equipment to... Yeah, just be like me and use my iPhone. <laughs> use what you have at your disposal. Yeah, just use whatever is convenient. Yeah, because like, if you watch your videos, like the quality is really nice, so... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on to, I guess, art journey or art-related questions. So, what got you into drawing? Ooh, <sighs> okay. This is, I feel like, I've, oh my god, this is just like when people ask you, oh, how long, when did you start drawing? And you're like, oh, when I, when I was bored, like, when I was like three, I started drawing. And then people go like, no, what have you been doing art? Seriously, though. But honestly, like, drawing just kind of been part of like me like i just do it like obviously when you mature over time and with age your art kind of becomes more serious as well so mm -hmm. i guess if, if i started drawing to draw more it would be when i got into digital art because i really like the medium and back then like now my school really encourages everyone to do like digital art like but then like back then like back then in like year seven i was doing digital art and i was like can i do it at school and you're like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah digital art made me draw more and a reason why I started drawing, uh, cause my sister drew, and as like you have, as the annoying younger sibling, you just kind of copy whatever your older sibling does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, I guess also, cause my friends also drew, and I wanted to get, fit in, so I was like, okay, maybe I'll start drawing as well. Hmm. Yeah. So when did you, when exactly did you start doing digital? Because I guess that's kind of segues into the next question as well. Uh, I started digital when I got my computer, so um, like maybe October two thousand fifteen. Hmm. Nice. Oh my god, my digital art journey is as old as Manse. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. So weird. I'm, I'm I mean, we weird. remember those dates, so. <laughs> Those days are important to us. We're, we just have carrot brains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess I started drawing because it's kind of similar reason in terms of um, my friends at the time started drawing and I kind of wanted to become closer to them. Um, the friend that I 
was closest to wasn't in the same art class, but her friend was, and I wanted to get along with her. And she was very encouraging of like getting me into anime. So I got into anime and drawing like around the same time. I love anime. Okay. <laughs> I feel like a lot of artists started drawing because of anime. I, yeah. <laughs> it's like a big influence. And then digital art, I started, I think, a year after I started drawing. So I think in 2010-ish. Well, like when I was 13, I think, is when I started. Cool. Ah, I guess this is 17 questions. But um, who would you want to see Seventeen collaborate with? G friend. <laughs> I have G friend. Dude, I think the second ever stage I've watched from them was those G friend X Seventeen oh. memories of springtime stage and Mama, and they were in Hong Kong too. What was I doing? <laughs> I'm so pissed. Like I could have been there, but instead, of what was I doing? Probably at home. Watching my little pony. Stupid <laughs> yeah, so um, I would want them to collab again, but it's not possible anymore. Oh. What about you? I think, like, in a similar sense, I want them to collaborate with Newest again. Like, because they're also under Pledis. But Dude. Heaven was, like, mind blowing to me. <laughs> When like a company does like things within their company, it's like it's like bonding with like their employees, like Wizzy and like S Coops. They were meant to be like the newest in Tempest, whatever thing. Like they were meant to be like, you know, they got like separated in a way. Like I kind of miss seeing more like company groups interact with each other. Yeah, do I have like a high V, like everyone in high V just collab with like newest and like BTS and 70? Oh, what do you friends? Um, concepts you would like to see each member do for their solo, as well as I think the person also said that if we don't want to go through every single member, we could do the ones for our biases. This is just in general because I feel like. When I see the Woozy solo, I'm gonna be dead. Like, yeah. I'm dead. Like, Hoshi, I was like already like, oh my god, I'm crying. Like, the point where you fangirl so hard, like, like that, like, I don't know, it's just like you're so embarrassed about yourself for fangirling so hard. Like, that's gonna be me. <laughs> I'm already sensing it. And then my, all my friends are gonna just spam me pics to make, to like, make fun of me even more. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, but I really, I, I don't know if this will like suit them because they're like 25 I don't know how old they are but like the pretty you concept or bad say concept I agree I like, this. like the pink uwu like snapshoot was like close like something like snapshoot like, like, like have you seen the meme was like the, the meme which is like the old album and then it's like yeah the album was like like edgy and then there's Dark. just like snapshoot yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i just really like snapshoot so um, i agree hi woozy please bring it back thank <laughs> you from a carrot <laughs> So I'm excited for their comeback because it does seem more of a lighthearted one still. I really like Hitori Jenna. It's so cute. Oh. <laughs> I think we might have similar tastes in. Oh, we love that. But out of all the carrots, like I talked to, like if pretty you like has to be in their top five. Or like, or else are you human? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. If some carrot watching this doesn't have pretty you in your top five. Um, I respect that, but I also don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat, yeah. <laughs> Pretty is like my number one, so <laughs> I just like seeing them have fun. So it's nice to have those concepts. Favorite going seventeen episode or moment? Dude, don't lie to. <laughs> okay, you can already imagine like the crazy Hoshi, just like. I was mafia, so I know what's going on inside your head. I don't know. Just seeing them like, not like, so because I remember when when they debuted in the beginning, you know, just like 
when they're stressed, like I'm not like or like even when they overwork, like I know they have a lot of schedules, but I'd rather them like not produce that much content for us and like legit take a break instead of like every day producing content or like practicing for their comeback or something like that. So mm-hmm. right now, like being relaxed and happy and just like especially because like. Okay, I I have no position to say this because I've never been a K-pop idol. So, but like, like just like looking them from the outside, like the amount of stress or pressure they have to deal with each day, just like really makes me feel really bad. So I really like seeing them be less stressed and still be able to enjoy life how a normal person should. And cause, I don't know, cause they can't even live a normal life, cause like people will like go follow them wherever they go oh, and yeah. stuff. But like them just being able to relax and live life. Maybe it's like kind of stemming off of what you said, but I, hyperrealism. Favorite. They're just all drunk. Yeah. <laughs> but they're having fun, so it's like it's nice to see them. You know, they kind of get to do what they want, even while technically they're filming. Break. Yeah, I would, like, not force them, because I feel like sometimes in variety shows, too, um, like, they would, like, f- kind of force the members, like, to do something, or, like, do something that they're not comfortable with. Yeah, like, d- literally doing it just for the content. Or, like, like, yeah, like, as much as like, I love Wizzy Seigyo, if he's not comfortable with it, then I'd rather not see it, you know? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> So, we're gonna move on to anime and movies, so what's your favorite anime characters? I think everyone knows this. It's Killua from Hunter x Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really bad. My obsession with him is like, really, it was really... <laughs> uh, something. <laughs> um, I don't explain why Hunter x Hunter, but I feel like it's like a really optimistic anime because when i watched it i was like not in a very good state like my health was bad and my mental health was also bad <laughs> so um when i watched it um, i felt like like it gave me like hope to like be happy again and also it's really inspiring also there's one quote wait this is spoilers there's one quote that somebody said i'm not gonna say who because that's kind of spoilers it's like um like this is a paraphrase but it's like life isn't about the end goal it's like about the process of and the friends you make along the way or something like that and i was like wow that is so deep that is such a good way to think about how life should be and i just kill was just great <laughs> so well, i agree <laughs> what's your favorite anime mm, i don't know uh am i gonna say Either Haikyuu? Mm. I guess like, I, I feel like I, ha- I kind of have like three. So it's either like Haikyuu, Gintama, or Natsume Yujincho. I've watched none of those, but I know oh, them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, favorite character? Like, um, I feel like Sugawara in Haikyuu is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Who's that again? Sorry, let me go. He's like the, the gray haired one. The setter, oh. like, the third year, yeah. Did did Haikyuu make you play volleyball? Because I know a lot of my friends are playing volleyball because of Haikyuu. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because like I was in uni, I think, or like just at the end of high school when that happened. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I'm a potato, so like that's not even enough to motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still waiting for one of my friends to try the Saitama workout. <laughs> Because they work out, and I'm like, you gotta try the Saitama workout one day. (laughs) And then he becomes bald, and then he becomes Saitama. Just kidding. I guess that answers the favorite anime question. But do you have a favorite Mm -hmm. movie? Oh. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna be basic and say I really like Kimi no Nawa. But I mean, it's, it's a valid opinion. It's really good. Mm. I'm also gonna be basic and say I really like Ghibli, but my favorite is Spirited Away, Mihal's Moving Castle. Yep, <laughs> those are my two picks. 
Oh my god, Ruizu! Oh my god, you know, when people ask, oh, what, what do you two have in common? Well, I guess you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't really watch movies that often, but I do love watching like the Ghibli movies and stuff. So those two okay. are my favorite as well. So I mean, how can you not love it? Actually, I was kind of sad that Demon Slayer became first yeah. top charting movie instead of the Spirit Did Away. I was like, no! Dang. <laughs> I haven't watched the movie though. First. I haven't either. Mm, let's see, if you could choose one no, if you could choose to be any character, who would they be? Oh yeah, oh my god, I thought- I, I remember somebody asking that before and I was like thinking long and hard about everything, but um, I think- Have you watched Cardcaptor Sakura? Uh, I haven't watched it fully. Okay, so basically there's this magical anime girl called Sakura. <laughs> so I want to be her, Sakura, and she also- there's okay. This is there's this there's this boy too called Lee Shaoran, and he's from Hong Kong, and I'm also from Hong Kong. So we can, if I was Sakura, I could speak Cantonese to him. <laughs> oh yeah, but also she has magical powers, and she has like a flying pet, cat-looking thing. Yeah, like yeah, K Kiro Chan, like this lion chibi thing okay i don't know but like oh my god that's like the perfect world perfect and there's uh, it's just such a good world to live in because i thought about it if i was in hunter hunter i would die immediately yeah. <laughs> like no joke so i i went for the a safer solution i feel like i had a hard time even like imagining what character just because like i I like a lot of like shonen anime and stuff, but like same thing, I would die. Like <laughs> probably like the first episode I'm introduced or whatever, I just goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I feel like the world that um I know you said you didn't watch Natsume Yujin shows, but basically it's kinda like um I don't know what they're called. I don't think they're demons, but like he can communicate with the he can see what are they called? Let me just let me look it up. Like yokai, but basically he's like helping all these like yokai-ish people or creatures, and like as he goes about his daily life and stuff. That'd be so cool. We're on to the I guess like the longer section, which is mostly like tips and advice. Um, tips on getting inspiration. Hmm. I think. Okay, so like Pinterest, those are like kind of like, I think like or like just Twitter or whatever social media you use. That's kind of self-explanatory. But I think one thing I get inspiration from is just like life in general. Just like when I walk around the street, like I just kind of observe what around me is interesting or I feel like could be cool to draw. And I have to take a picture and go like, okay, I'm gonna save that. Or when I'm just like when you're like like deep midnight thoughts and you're like thinking about life and then you suddenly get a really good idea and then like just note those down so i feel like life in general just observe the world more around you instead of like being in your phone being on your phone mm -hmm. so yeah. like that kind of helps i think it's like also like being open to allow new things to like for you to experience like new things almost like gather more inspiration just because like you're broadening your horizons a little bit more anything around you technically could inspire you it's just like the way you think of it i guess artist struggles so um i guess like tips on what like if you're feel like you're not improving so it's like any tips for that or like redrawing every little detail or well i guess we'll start with those two i guess i feel like we both I go through this too. Like, if you seen my part one, I was like, no, the sketch looks bad. I have to start again. Like, I feel like part of it's just letting go and accepting that it's okay to not be perfect sometimes. That sounds so cheesy, but like, it is like okay, especially if you're doing it for yourself. But maybe spend that time instead trying like a new artwork instead of like focusing on one and making sure it's perfect. Mm hmm yeah so like for improvement i feel like i don't remember who said it but 
there was an artist that I used to follow a lot and I think she said that if you feel like you're not improvement, like improving or you feel like you're stuck, it's probably about time that you're like, in terms of like video game terms, like you're leveling up because you're expectations are no longer like meeting your your ability i guess so it's like time for change in a sense uh -huh. so it's like it's i think that's like a good way to know that you should maybe take a step into either like a different direction when people think they're not improving they're looking at like the overall like piece right or like your overall art but I think it's easier to see improvement if you're just focusing on like smaller things and working towards improving that smaller thing to help produce something better in like the general scheme of things. But also in terms of like redrawing every detail, I feel like, I don't know if it's my prop who said this one, but you want to fail faster so that you can start something new again. Because if you keep repeating the same thing over and over, then you're never like passing that point. And it's easier if you just finish it and move on. If anything, it's like demotivating, I guess, to see yourself struggle on the same thing over and over again. And sometimes you just need like a fresh start. Yes, I agree with your professor. It's like we, we're always like taught to, if you feel like something's not going well, like it's either try to fix it and you know you're gonna fix it or just like scrap it i guess yes time is very valuable i think that's one thing i learned especially um, i'm doing ib which is like a really demanding curriculum diploma so like one thing my teacher always tells us like to organize your time well and stuff like that so like rather spend your time doing something you know um like making a new piece rather than like being stuck on it yeah. Tips on not comparing yourself to other artists. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like every artist goes through this problem. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's really hard. It's not even just artists, just everyone, full stop. If you don't compare yourself to anyone, then um, I need to ask you how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess you need to think about it on like a larger scale. like. When you see someone drawing, um, okay, even they might be younger than you, they might have started from an earlier age. So you gotta take that into consideration. Like, okay, yeah, my, this, this person, person might have been like, like they're like 13, 13 right now, but, but they, they could have like really been like going to a lot of drawing classes since they were like five. Like, like you don't know that, you just see their artwork. So. Mm -hmm. It's like, like you, you want to take, take that into consideration, consideration that people, people so they, they might have spent a long time and one thing is like i say this to myself but like i, I don't do it because um uh, like try not not look at the age too much more look at like how much they spend drawing rather than how old they are so like like yes in your age they are younger than you or there's or they've been on earth less than you have but like in terms of practice hours wise they have definitely had more than you so you gotta like take that into consideration instead of just comparing it based on like outward appearance instead of like what you don't see instead of comparing and being i guess like in this case it might be like out of jealousy or like being envious of the person it's probably better to see that as maybe your like your goal like change your mindset so that you see it as a positive thing like you want to be maybe where they're at someday instead of saying that you're never gonna be at that point so i think part of it is changing how you view especially if you first started like don't compare yourself to like professionals they've been in the industry for so long like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I i've heard people say that if you're comparing yourself to another artist and you're wanting to see improvement like compare it to your own old art exactly yeah I'll keep probably a little bit more meaningful and a little bit more accurate in terms of like you probably are improving it's just that because you're comparing it to maybe a person who is for some reason like out of different circumstances is higher level than you then that becomes discouraging but if you're seeing it for your own self 
comparing it to yourself. Like most likely, the improvement is there. You just have to recognize it. I guess a lot of artists have like the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Or, like they like always think that they're not good enough. So I guess one thing to do is also find to have a better like a supporting community. Like that, you know, you can trust. Like it doesn't have to be like a lot of people or just like two or three friends that like really, you know, we really have each other's back. So you guys can always motivate each other. You get your friends to draw too. Let's see. In your opinion, what is the best platform to share your art? Oh my god, we should have a lonely night episode on this. <laughs> I feel like if all the Karen fan artists like debate. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know how to use Twitter, like, at all. Like, I tried, did not work. Like, I'm, I'm so inactive on Twitter. It's, it's, and I, I don't know, Twitter? Like, in my area, or maybe it's just Hong Kong people don't really use Twitter. So, I don't, I just don't use Twitter. So, I feel like Instagram is really hard to get recognition, though. That I agree with, yeah. I feel like, for me, maybe I'm biased, but I think YouTube, Maybe the algorithm's been nicer to me, but I feel like usually if you do fandom animatics, they will get views <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know, like, they might not be, like, a lot, they might not blow up, but I feel like you'll get at least, like, some people watching it, and for me. But if you go deep, if you first start as, like, your own content, then it's harder on YouTube. So I feel like for fandom, it's easier on youtube but that could just be me because i'm i'm mostly on youtube mm -hmm. but you're you're on like every social media you have twitch too so like, <laughs> maybe you should you should tell us i feel like yeah like, all the different platforms definitely have pros and cons so i think for me i had a bit of a different experience in terms of youtube mm. How to explain this i feel like people think there's like a like a surefire way to get like subscribers and like many views on like your youtube video but we are at the the mercy of the algorithm right I like everything's kind of look yeah because for me um even though I, like um i was mostly active on tumblr <laughs> actually <laughs> before wow yeah because that's where a lot of us carrot fan artists were in like 2015 mm -hmm. 2016-ish era or I guess like in the beginning it was actually deviant art, but then that had a, like it died out first. But I feel like in terms of getting like a reach on any platform, having like being a part of a fandom is probably the best way. Because at least you have the people within the fandom to like communicate and kind of like circulate your stuff around with. And that's what I think that's what like I did mostly because I became more active on social media when I became more of like a carrot did like ASMR videos for a little bit just because of circumstances at home and then people found it for some reason and it got recommended and now I have like an influx of people who are like not carrots and stuff. Yeah, I feel like Lux's luck is definitely involved because um, one of my videos like blew up and I was like Oh my god, what the heck is happening? Like, I never expected that video to blow up too because it wasn't like a fandom video and usually my fandom videos like do way better just because like, I guess people like watching fandom things. It's definitely easier if you do have some kind of like, not a fan base, how do you say? Like an audience somewhere to expand into other social medias. Okay, so, um, how do you motivate yourself to draw? And I guess like, in terms of motivation for what like during i guess these times like during covid and stuff oh i feel like for covid it was easier for me because like you're in the house all the time like what are you meant to do and drawing is like the most obvious option i i think i drew more because of covid too but i feel like once you get out the slump of being sad that the pandemic is ongoing and you get yourself back together and you should like kind of want to stay motivated at home too it's kind of like an excuse to like work on yourself since you have so much time for i guess like hmm, i don't know about motivated to draw just because like for me i kind of have like two modes so like i draw either for myself to take a break from what i consider technically like the work aspect of drawing 
So like either like videos or merch or like orders and stuff or con like commissions. But like, I feel like having a schedule also helps push towards like, like forcing you to be not like motivated, but you have to get stuff done. You have to focus more on yourself. I think it's actually because of COVID I started to be active on my channel again. So for context, um, the pandemic came hurt earlier in Hong Kong because we're closer to Wuhan, right? So I came around like, like the end of January. So yeah. So um, at the beginning, I was like really sad because like all my plans basically got canceled. Before COVID, I was I posted one video like every four months on my channel. Oh. Because <laughs> um, um, I, I, I wouldn't say I was really active back then. I had like, like less than 10k too like last year. year. So like because of I feel like when you watch something really good, like you like really want to make fan art for it, and then you just like get into the mood of drawing a lot again. And then I also found Seventeen over the pandemic, so um, nice. <laughs> yeah, so the pandemic really made me that. But I want to say because of Seventeen, I got really good at drawing realism. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Nice. Is there anything you got into because of the pandemic? I don't know if there's anything like specific. I think like, well, I guess during the pandemic, I got more into, I think this is why like I started doing more Twitch streaming. Because I used to do it like back in 2018, but I never did it for very long. Do you usually do like your iPad or like digital or do you just do painting or like I alternate between iPad or like the Galmon tablet and then watercolor painting. Do you still watch offline? Um, not as like much as before, but I do like watch some stuff like occasionally. But I feel like I just like watching people play games now. So like, or yeah. just like hearing people talk like podcasts or like anything that's like a longer form of either video or audio entertainment I've been more into. Do you have any podcasts you want to recommend to the Rin Sprouts and the Saku Sprouts? <laughs> <laughs> I actually talked to Rin about this or Joanna. Um, I was like, I was like really scared because I don't want to like seem like I'm copying you. Cause but like I like had a poll or like I asked my community what they wanted to call it. A lot of people was like, we should be like majority like the winning option was Saku Sprouts like they were the one who came up with the name and then they voted for that and I was like I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm copying Rin <laughs> so I ask her if she's cool, cool with this, this. And, and then she's, she's like, like yeah sure it's like like even I don't know like long time ago like I would do more like Instagram live streams people just started calling themselves Rin Sprouts but I've never really like pushed for it which is like another reason why like I didn't really I didn't really mind because like I didn't really see myself as like sprout related technically. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the clovers. Yeah. So I like I never mm -hmm. really referred to like the people who watch my things as rin sprouts anyways, so Yeah, I don't really I don't really call them like soccer sprouts either. It's just like my ping, like my role. If you want like me to spam you on Discord about like random updates about my life, mm. um, yeah, I feel like if you, being at home is like not a bad thing. Like, everyone makes it seem like like being at home sucks. Maybe it's also because I'm a huge introvert. Yeah, but, like, being at home can be fun too. Like. You can game with your friends and the enjoyment of your aircon or you can stand like me <laughs> right now because I want to save, save the environment. Well, is there any like skills or anything you're wanting to learn? Oh, oh but during COVID, one of my skills that I really wanted to learn was was to learn every single 17 dance. Oh, wow. And, and I actually learned like 20 something like by the end of summer. Holy. <laughs> I forgot it! Like, I did a random play dance with one of my friends, and then I was like, Man, is it time to relearn them? Are you serious? Well, that's impressive, yeah. though. Did you learn any new skills? Besides, like, trying to upgrade my cooking and baking, 
a little bit more. But I wanted to learn more about, um, you know, like VTuber rendering. Ooh, oh my god. VTuber Rin Spirit? I'm waiting. Oh. <laughs> Why did I do this? I'm waiting for your your debut as a VTuber. <laughs> but other than that, I think it's just like teaching myself the Twitch stuff, that's it. Do you have any plans for your Sunday? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think I, I'm gonna stream tomorrow probably. How about you? I mean, the rest of the day. Yeah, the rest of the day, I guess. It's like 4 p.m. now. Um, I don't know. I, I need to edit my video to upload tomorrow. Uh, I edit like half of it. I actually find editing videos really fun. Oh, wait, we never answered this. What's your favorite color? Oh. Um, probably like teal or mint, I think, for me. How about you? Like, what about like color combos? Ah, uh, teal or turquoise with either orange or like red or like peach color. I think it's like usually my go-to if I'm doing like flowers or foliage or something. That's like my go-to. How about you? I like, I really like, it's like the really dreamy colors which is like pastel pink with like um, yellow mint and blue or purple like super very very like ubu colors <laughs> i use the word ubu and ironically it's but like i really like i just really like cute things no i agree like, yeah is like the vibrant pink still your favorite color though or oh, the color scheme because like that doesn't go well with a pastel if it's a too vibrant but like that in general is like that specific color is my favorite color but like i wouldn't use it a lot because it's like a very flashy color is your favorite 17 unit hip-hop unit oh uh. <laughs> i'd probably say hip-hop i i don't know well mine's mine's vocal okay <laughs> i wonder why <laughs> I need to copy how you write while you and like the heart stuff. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it? Let me try. I'm gonna stalk you on YouTube. <laughs> do you know some Korean? Uh, I know a little bit. Like, I can read it and write it, but like, reading, I need to learn like a lot more vocabulary. Because <laughs> I think like, in high school, we had like a substitute teacher and he's like, Korean's like alphabet is the easiest to learn. Therefore, everyone must learn it. <laughs> what? Um, no thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, just because it's easy doesn't mean it, you should learn it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he was like, I don't know. I don't know if he was just bragging to a bunch of teenagers. Because this guy is was like... Korean? No. <laughs> huh. Yeah. But he's like, I learned it in two months and we're like, Cool. Like, please That's teach us math. <laughs> Yay. I'm gonna like 2.30 for you right now. <laughs> That's fine. I actually didn't realize oh, what the no. time was. Oh, we need to sign for each the other one, right? I guess so. Oh, grand reveal. Oh my god. This is so cute. Makes me feel like I butchered yours. No! <laughs> No! Wait, that's so cute! Oh my god. This, this is, is like, like best, best collab, collab this is <laughs> Okay, so now that we've actually finished and we swapped <laughs> and got each other's reaction to each piece, um, but it was very fun to work with Veda to do this kind of collab where we swap um, each other's sketches and color each other's work. So thank you very much to Veda for doing the collab and suggesting Yay. and pretty much arranging the whole thing too. Yay! It's <laughs> so, an honor. <laughs> so please definitely go check out um, Veda's channel, Sakura Opal, and be sure to watch the first part if you haven't as well. And I think that is all for this this video is there anything you want to say at the end thanks for having me 
Yay! I think the the um, artwork will be on Instagram or like other social medias, right? So follow us. I'll probably be on the screen. You can put it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Yay. guys, very much for watching today's video, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.